Hello YouTube, what is up? I'm the reviewer of stuff and today I'm going to be doing another Lego video for you guys. So, I'm going to be doing as many of the Lego minifigure series as I can, but today I'm going to be starting with series 6, and you may think that's weird, but I don't have all of them for series 1 yet, I've lost some from series 2, one piece is missing from series 3, I have the whole of series 4 but that's really dusty, and series 5 is just in my room somewhere. So I'm going to start with the first whole series I have, which is series 6, this one. So I'm going to uh, do a close up and a review and my thoughts on each figure, starting from the bottom left and going to the top right. So figure number 1, here we go. Okay, figure number 1. This is the Intergalactic Girl, and she is loosely based on the series, uh, the ser series one Spaceman. Okay, so she comes with two accessories. The first one is her luxurious pink helmet with a blue tinged visor. The second one is a ray gun, which you will also see later on in the series with a blue lightsaber blade. Right in uh, in her person, you can see she's wearing a bright, uh, girly Barbie pink jumpsuit. Uh, with lots of metal on. So you can see on her feet and on her knees she has pockets and zips. Um, across here she has like a, uh, it's sort of like a wetsuit with the lines going all across. And then travelling further up you have a gold and silver belt with a little knob in the middle. And you can see her chest area there. And a logo with a sil uh, silver moon and a golden space shuttle. And an oxygen tank here. Um, she has darker purple arms than the rest of her body no double sided printing she has blonde wavy hair copied from Marion Ravenwood from the Indiana Jones series and her face is normal yellow with gold lipstick on her mouth with a quirky smile and on her eyes normal eyes with a lot of mascara and eyebrows so that was the intergalactic space girl time for figure two Figure number two is the Butcher, and he's a very, very cool figure, and I really like him. So, the accessories. Here, he has his nice Butcher's knife with the serrated edge, and the nice metal curve. The next accessory, maybe the best one of the series, is this T-bone steak with the red meat and the signature T in the middle. That is the same on the other side, and it is like a normal bone piece from Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, onto the actual Butcher. He has what a signature butcher wears, um, a white and blue pinstriped jacket. Um, he has no double-sided printing, only a dark blue belt in the middle. He has a white tuxedo underneath, as you can see where his apron continues on his chest, with a red bow tie there. He has normal arms, and onto his face, he has a brown sideburns, a normal smiley face, and his butcher's hat is just amazing, it's a work of art. You can see it's like a bicorn hat, and in the middle there you can see a line, and I think it looks really cool. So, that was figure number two. Uh, this is minifigure number three. He is the mechanic, and he is based on a 1950s greaser in a auto garage. Right, um, he comes with two accessories. He has a normal Lego spanner made in silver, uh, silvery grey, sorry. And he also has a little tool, bit, tool uh, box, which is also used on Ned Flanders and the new Lego The Simpsons house. It's red, and you can see all the lines of detail, like the lock and the handle, and the hinges. So, awesome. Right, onto the mechanic himself. He has normal dark blue leggings, no back printing, as you can see. And onto his chest. On his chest, um, there is a fair bit of detail. You can see red fire patterns, and a sign on his left breast area saying RAF, and two sewn-in pockets, and the same for his belt. His belt seems to be sewn in. <clears throat> and as you can see there, he has a black uh, black lines to show sort of a jacket mechanic overall area. Right, on his face he has a smiley face, so it shows he enjoys his job, and various grease stains. And for his hair, you can have a you see a 1950s classic look that you would expect with greased up and a flicked quiff. Right, figure number four, the genie. Possibly my favourite, along with the alien. His one accessory is the genie lamp, which you rub three times and a genie comes out, of course. And I think it's unique to this set, while well, it started off in this, anyway. So that's gold, and it looks nice. So, onto the genie, he only has one leg, which is why I'm using the stand I custom made. Um, and you can see here, he has a unique piece for his genie, sort of cloudy leg piece, and that's a brilliant piece, I love it. 
He has a blue chest, you can see his pecs there, really strong and muscly. He has a purple and gold jacket along with a golden little waist thing. And on his arms, he has the same colour arms as his skin, and he has golden hands. Right, um, no back printing. On his head, he has a, a beard you see in many other figures, um, but with a blue face, and he's smiling. For his turban, it's a purple turban, which you also see in the Lego Harry Potter Professor Quirrell, and he has a unique amulet made for that. So, that was figure number four. Done. Figure number five is the leprechaun, who is very relatable to me, because I myself am a midget. So, cool. Um, he comes with one accessory, it's his little pot of gold, which inside comes three golden studs. Okay, the leprechaun has short miniature green legs, as I mentioned before. And he has a really, he has no back printing by the way, he has a really, really nice jacket. It's a little um, green coat with golden buttons and a golden buckle. He has a dark green waistcoat inside and he has the shamrock pin, the shamrock is a clover, pinned onto him. And he has a little white shirt you can see, just about there. And he also has a little green bow, bow tie sort of bow thing. Um, he has a ginger beard and um, eyes. Sorry, that was a bit stuck. He has a ginger beard and ginger eyelashes and a big cheesy smile. And he has a really nice bowler hat, which is green with a black uh, belt and a buckle on top. Number five done. Minifigure number six. This is the Roman soldier, and again, an absolutely brilliant figure. Lego have outdone themselves on this series. Right, so an accessory is the spear with a slightly rubber tip to avoid children hurting their eyes. Um, and he also comes with a brilliant shield. It's a, it's the Roman legionary shield, the big wooden one, the one which they carry. And also focus is screwed up. And you can see it has the eagle wings, which was their main symbol, and a stud in the middle, which is the boss of the shield, which is what it's called. It, it also has a handle there, and is made of dark red. Right, the actual minifigure. He has a Roman uniform. He has, you can see, leather sandals on his feet. You can see a red loin cloth sort of area. Uh, you can see some leather with metal on. And for the belt, leather with metal on again. You can see his Roman tunic for his main body armour with gold clasps, uh, fasteners on there. With some more leather and more clips. He has single printing. Um, he has a normal standard Lego City face. And he has a brand new sculpted helmet piece, which I absolutely love. So, really well done there, Lego. And this is also related to the Lego Highlander, which I will show you later. This is minifigure number seven, I think. Um, this is the surgeon, and I think she looks really good, actually. So, comes with two accessories. This is the ne injection needle. I'm not sure why. It should be like a knife or a scalpel or something, but um, you get that in other sets, like the nurse for season one, which is great. And I love this accessory. It's the x-ray, and it has the x-ray of a skeleton's chest. So look, it fits perfectly over there, see? Uh, that's a, You can see the skeleton and the spinal cord and a bit of the head, a bit of the arms and a bit of the torso. Okay, onto the figure. She has normal turquoisey blue legs. Um, nothing double-sided. Um, she can just see rough creases in her surgeon uniform and a, it's a v-neck sweater. You can see down there you've got like uh, the hem and a white t-shirt. Her head consists of a concentrated look with a mouth cover over there and her surgeon's cap, which also happens to look like a shower cap. Okay, this is minifigure number eight and this is the skater. I'm not too pleased with the skater because Lego always seemed to do a skater. They did one in series one in series 4 and series 6 and I've probably missed some down the line so again I'm bored with the skater for crying out loud but apart from the skater everything else is good just thought I'd get that point out there but um, her accessory is a skateboard as you can probably work out with a skull and a star and a heart with wings um, and the actual figure consists of black legs with some chainy um, uh, pockets on there she has a chain belt to make it look like a punk um, like a zip and she's clearly wearing a hoodie as you can see just about there with a skull with a ribbon on 
and uh, again more pockets for the hoodie. Her face consists of red, uh, pink lipstick with her smiley face mouth, um, some pink mascara, and her hair is black with a purple stripe there. Now, the one thing I've got to mention here is this is exactly like the Lego Wild style. So I think Lego based their Wild style design from the Lego movie on her. So, minifigure 8, done. I'm a skateboarding pro. Woohoo! Damn it. Minifigure number 9. The Bedhead. Love this figure, flat out from the start. Look at this teddy bear. This is his only accessory, and for some reason some grown-up looking boy has a teddy bear, but we can ignore that fact for now. It's an awesome old Lego, so really well done there. He has a little hole underneath to hold him. He has, you can even see the mould of the shape of the legs and the feet. Um, you can see his little arms poking out. He has a little belly. And look at the detail in that head. I mean, that's ridiculously good. You can see he has his little nose, his little um, mouth, his little ears. You even have the holes in the ears. And I prefer the teddy to the figure, to be honest. Anyway. Anyway, he has a uh, pinstriped light blue and dark blue pajamas with black buttons and a black sort of just you know classic pajamas. What you the thing what you see in films. Um, he's looking really tired there. He's in a massive yawn, and you can see his um, eyebrows and eye shifted. He has scrumpled up bedhead hair, and he also has a double sided head. Sorry, and he's sleeping quite peacefully there. So, again, really like this figure. Lego, well done. Worst figure ever. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the flamenco dancer. She likes to dance, as you can tell by her smiley face with a wart. Anyway, her accessory is a fan, a black fan. The fan is the best bit. And she has one of those big Lego dresses. It's nice to see a figure with a big dress like that. But I mean, they did the Kanoko girl, the Kamoko girl, something like that, in the series two before, and uh, anyway, you can see she has a frilly black dress with uh, black polka dots with a red background. Same for the top, with more frilliness near the top by her shoulders. She actually does have double-sided printing, which is good. It sort of makes up for the figure, and um, the dots there, and um, you can see, as I mentioned before, she has a wart on her face, red lipstick. Mascara on her eyes, and that's it. And her hair consists of a normal hair with a bun, and a flick at the front to make, to bring out the beauty within. Mini figure number eleven. As you can see, this is the robot, and in my opinion, a very very good mini figure. Very well designed, very well detailed, and a very good collector's item. So, um, he his main colour is light grey, and blue and red. He doesn't have any double sided printing, but he does have an accessory stroke main minifigure part which is the clockwork piece and it connects like a stud and it has the little key typical piece as you would expect and that's connected via one of those connecting pieces so on the front he has lots of silver markings like silver tubes and nuts and bolts there silver tubes here and then his body goes into a blue belt with more nuts and bolts up here you get a blue control panel with you can see a little wavelength there many buttons and knobs and you can see here there are like timers and clocks with more nuts he has red hands here and his face is interesting it's a it's a uh, cube sort of thing cuboid and he has blue eyes with uh, white centers and he has a black mouth with which is decorated with yellow and red there is a stud on the top and patterns like little antennae on the side here so i love this figure that was minifigure number 11 nom 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 mm, nom 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 this is minifigure number 12, the Minotaur, or for you Americans, the Minotaur. Okay, uh, this is another brilliant figure with a very unique head mould. So, his first accessory, and the only accessory is an axe. It's just a normal black half-size pole and a and an axe part, which is on the Lego Styles Gamorrean Guards and some of the Lego Ninjago sets. So, the actual Minotaur, he has sort of a, a dark blue and gold loincloth. You can see that, and it has uh, Celtic patterns for some reason. And then he's, his main colour scheme, by the way, is brown. And you can see on his belt he has more golden colour schemes, um, and some light blue as well. And then you get up to his chest. 
where he has, you can see he has an 8 pack there, and you can see the furry details just surrounding, right there, you can see details of fur. He has no back printing, as is the trend of these figures, and normal brown hands. Now his head mould is really, really good. It's unique, it's meant to be like an ox, you can see his snout there, he has yellow eyes, and it connects um, in, in the place of a head. It also has two horns poking out, and a little rough patch of hair on the top. So that was minifigure number 12. Minifigure number 13 is the bandit, so I've had to lie him down because of his dark colour scheme. So I really like this figure too. Right, he has two accessories. They're both a normal black pistol, a revolver, but instead of done in dark grey, it is done in black. And I think it looks brilliant. You can see the trigger, the cocker, the scope, and the actual revolver barrel, which I like. It's the exactly it's exactly the same on this gun too. Right, onto the actual figure himself. On his legs, it's ma oh, sorry, it's mainly done in black, or very, very dark brown on some of him. And he you can see he has a belt and some metal claspings there on his pocket. And he also has space for four bullets. Um, as you go up, you can see he has a, another belt. Um, and you can see he has two holster straps for many, many bullets. And he actually does have double-sided printing. This continues the, with the bullets, and he has many, many bullets there t as well. He has... It, it's like a, um, a small white shirt underneath his red scarf, by the way. He has brown leather hands, and he has a red scarf, and he has a face with a smile underneath that, and some stubble. Um, his hat is a normal Indiana Jones hat, but made in black. And you can see it's very, very detailed. I do actually like this figure a lot. Ching, ching, ching. Die, die, filthy Celt. Die, filthy Roman. Rawr! Minotaur! This is minifigure number 14, and not the best figure, but he's still a good figure. This is the Highlander. Now, before I start the review, I'd like to point out that in this series, LEGO, I think, have done three figures of the same type of topic. Um, you've got the Highlander, you've got the Roman, and you've got the Minotaur. Now... The Romans in Britain never managed to conquer the Highlanders in Scotland, so I think that goes well together. And the Minotaur was also in, I think it was Greek mythology, but still of the ancient world. So I just thought I'd say that. Right, um, the Highlander comes with two accessories. He comes with a normal broadsword there, made in silver. He comes with a round shield, you can see with the nails there and the boss in the middle with a handle. And now, onto the actual figure. He is <coughs> mainly... Blue and brown, mainly blue I'd say. You can see blue sandals, he has yellow knees. Then you can see a blue patterned, blue patterned shorts. And then as you go up you can see a blue toga style cloth with brown leather armour. You can see the nails making it together there. You can also see leather straps with uh, brass knobs and, and you can see near his top on his left breastplate you can see a, a decoration. He also has a leather hoodie area there and he has normal arms. He has no back printing and he has very... he looks really um, unruly. He has um, a screaming face like he's gonna kill somebody, uh, ginger eyelashes and ginger stubble. He also has very very long brown hair to make him look unshaved and untidy. Right, minifigure number 15. This is my favourite figure of the series, and I think LEGO have done a brilliant job here. So if you don't have this figure already, I definitely recommend getting it. Anyway, he comes with one accessory, and that happens to be a ray gun in white. Now, we normally only have it in grey, so it's great to have it in white. It's the same as the Galactic Girl, the first figure I did in this video. Um, it also has half a lightsaber blade in bright green, the same colour as Luke Skywalker, which looks amazing. This, by the way, is based on the Roswell alien in 1947 in Mexico. Anyway, this is the alien himself. He has light grey legs and a dark grey middle. He has no back printing whatsoever. And for he has minimal printing, but it looks brilliant. He has lo lots of dark grey lines in the middle of his torso, and that gives him an unhuman look. And he has, you can see, his chest area and his stomach and maybe a rib cage, that could be. You can also see by his neck area where he has many creases and folds in his skin. He has dark grey hands and light grey arms as well, and the same on the other side. And his head is a brand new sculpt made especially for this, where it is circular, and you can also see a neck at the bottom here, 
and it curves up there, so which looks brilliant. He has um, dark, he has very black eyes with white bits there, which also makes it look alien, and he has a slightly cringe sort of look. As you can, if you can see this close up, he has a pointed chin which goes in his head. Again, this is a very, very good figure, and I love it. Right, this is figure number 16, this is the last and final one of the series, and again, is an absolutely brilliant must-have figure. As you can tell, this is the Statue of Liberty, and I think she looks absolutely brilliant. She comes with two accessories to start off with. She comes with a signature green torch, with the flame here, and she also comes with the um, Independence Day sort of booklet she holds in her hand. I'm not American, so I don't really know enough about the Statue of Liberty, but... Um, Tell me in the comments about this. Okay. By the way, I must mention that this is done in a green, which you don't often get, which is another thing I really do like about this figure. So, anyway, this is a very detailed figure. Instead of the legs, you can see she has those that skirt piece. And you can see here in Made of Copper, she has those standard robes um, with made of black print and a darker green, which you can see is the shadow. Moving up, she doesn't have any back printing. She has um, a sort of a toga dress thing here, which is to celebrate freedom and independence, I think. And again, more black and more dark gr dark green. Her arms are the same standard colour as, as for the rest of her body. Um, her head consists of a normal female Lego head, but is made in green. She has mascara, eyebrows, and you can see white dots in her eyes. She also has dark green lipstick and a normal, a, a normal face. Right, her headpiece I really do like. As you can see here, it has the it has a normal hair bun there, but here it has the the pointed sort of crown she has here, and it has the holes here. I don't know anything about the Statue of Liberty, so sorry about that. But all I know here is this looks exactly like the real Statue of Liberty does, and it comes with the exact same accessories. So very good job there, Lego. Well done. So. As you know, my name is The Reviewer of Stuff, and you just watched the complete review of LEGO Minifigures Series 6. So, stay tuned for more series, and I will deliver them to you very soon. So, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And, I hope you enjoyed the funny clips in there, I tried really hard to make them. So, thanks again for watching, peace out.